There are lots of ways to oxidize alcohols, and today I'm going to show you the mechanism to oxidize alcohols with CrO3. Now, CrO3 has a chromium atom in the center and three oxygens connected to it, so the chromium is a little bit delta plus. That makes it open to attack by this oxygen, and the first step of the mechanism is to have the oxygen attach itself to the CrO3. Kind of like this. The hydrogen has been displaced at this point. After that, the CrO3 steals the electrons from the bond that oxygen made with it. And to replace those two electrons in oxygen's octet, one of the hydrogens gives its electrons to the CO bond. So, we're breaking this bond here, breaking this bond, and we're creating a double bond between these two atoms. I'm going to keep the orientation of my molecule the same for you. This hydrogen is now gone. It's an H+. Perhaps it dissolved back into the aqueous acid solvent. And the oxygen is now double bonded. Now, what you will also notice is that the CrO3 has been... Uh, it gained electrons, so it's been, reduction is a gain, it's been reduced, and you end up with CrO3 2 minus ions in the solution. We lost an H plus here, we lost an H plus here, and we gained a 2 minus over the course of the reaction as well. So overall, we didn't gain or lose any charge, just like an oxidation reduction reaction should be. Now what you'll notice is that this primary alcohol became an aldehyde over the course of the reaction. If you're using CrO3 and aqueous H2SO4, then this aldehyde is going to get oxidized as well. Because we often do this reaction in aqueous H2SO4, this particular molecule reacts with water to form R C H O H O H. This is what exists when you have an aldehyde in water. Now it's an equilibrium between the two, but this is much more susceptible to oxidation by CrO3 via the exact same mechanism. The oxygen attaches to the CrO3 R O H O CrO3, see how it displaced the H again? And then the CrO3 steals the electrons from the oxygen bond, and the hydrogen replaces them in that oxygen. We lose H via H+. So what we end up with is this. Now this obviously isn't the geometry of the molecule, I'm just keeping it that way so you can see what fell off and reattached, but because the water split the aldehyde into a diol or glycol molecule, that made it more susceptible to oxidation or attack, or made it more susceptible to attack CrO3, which made it more easily oxidized into this, which is actually a carboxylic acid. Now, what you'll remember is that primary alcohols become aldehydes via oxidation, and secondary alcohols can become ketones. That mechanism is the same as this one, except one of these H's is a different chain of carbons, maybe an R prime or something. Two degree becomes ketone, one degree becomes aldehyde. But the aldehyde, again, there's an equilibrium between that aldehyde and the diol if you're in aqueous solution, and it gets oxidized into a carboxylic acid. Your question may be, how do I stop at the aldehyde? Well, there are two main ways that we do that. The first, if the aldehyde is volatile enough, if it has a small enough molecular weight, or if the boiling point is low enough, um, what you can do is collect the aldehyde as it boils off of your solution and collect it separately. 
um, in one of those cooling columns. So the gas, uh, I guess I'll draw it for you. Here's the beaker, aldehydes evaporating. You've got this little thing catching it and the gas goes in here, but then you have cold water circulating around your tube. So all the gases become liquids and they become droplets and then they fall through the tube and then you collect them into a separate beaker. The water won't condense because this is just cold water, like, uh, I don't know, five degrees Celsius going through here. So the water won't condense, but the aldehyde will. And then that liquid drips into the beaker. It's called distillation. Look it up. Anyways, you can do that, but you can also oxidize alcohols with something called PCC. Now I'll do another video about that. But if you use PCC, we have ways of stopping it at the aldehyde and preventing it from going on to react with the carboxylic acid. It's actually PCC in methylene chloride, which prevents us from having water around, which prevents the aldehyde from becoming this, which is much more easily oxidized. So if we can prevent this from forming, it probably won't get oxidized to the carboxylic acid. Cool? Cool. You got questions? I got answers. Ask them in the comments section. And until then, best of luck.